Okay, uh, so, you were a professor of criminology at... I know. You murdered your wife? I know. And now, sometimes, people approach you with, well, I suppose you'd say, cases? Yes. And you solve them? Sometimes. The death row detective. The crime-solving wife killer. What sort of paper are you writing for? I have a number of options and a lot of interest. No, I didn't ask which paper. I asked what kind. Because your headlines sound a little lurid. I'm a serious journalist. I have a track record in crime writing, so if I'm sounding lurid right now, maybe that's on you. OK? People bring problems to you. They bring cases. And I'm wondering why that is. I mean, you're a clever man, but you're hardly the only clever person in the world. So why do all those people come here, pouring their hearts out, asking for answers from a man who brutally murdered his wife? What's going on there, do you think? Ask them. Do you think it's because of what you did? Do you think people find it exciting or titillating to talk to someone like you? Do you? No. But you think all those other people might, including, presumably, your readers. Man, that's a lot of people you feel superior to. The warden said a case you take has to meet particular criteria. Yes. What criteria? <laughs> I think you should consider very carefully if you want to ask me that question. Why? If I answer, you'll be unable to print your interview. Why? Because you're a decent human being. What makes you think I'm decent? The contempt in your face when you look at me. Moral worth. I'm sorry? Moral worth. That's the only criterion. I want to do good. I have a little ability, almost no resources, and very limited time. Within that framework, I would like to do whatever good I can. That's it. That's all there is. I want to do good. What, so this is like, what would you call it, atonement? No. No. Atonement will come when they strap me to a table and end my life. Until then, I make do. Thank <laughs> you.